Becoming a math teacher really happened sort of late in my career. After my kids were ready for school and I went back to school myself, I was actually really timid about math and I wasn't that great at it growing up. But the teacher at NCTC of all places, College Algebra, I did really well and she said, you know, you're really actually really good at this. Maybe you should consider teaching it. Everybody can be good at math and a lot of them think that they're predisposed to understand it or not understand it and I really don't believe in that. When you're working with a student and they communicate to you they don't like math, they don't like math because they don't think they're good at it. And so once you can change that, that, that downward spiral and start moving that thing forward and grabbing some positive momentum, once they start having success at it, their, their whole mindset changes. Barbies and mathematics go together, who knew? I think that I picked it up at a camped conference, which is a math conference that happens here. What it does is it creates an experience for students to collect live data by uh, attaching rubber bands to the feet of a Barbie or an action figure, whatever it is. And then they drop that Barbie and measure the distance of the fall with one rubber band, two rubber bands, three rubber bands, four rubber bands, all the way up to eight. And with that data, they create a scatter plot. And with that scatter plot, they figure out the line of best fit and then they plug in their data into a graphing calculator and from that they get a linear regression model and they use that model to plug in the distance of Barbie's actual epic drop that's happening today, 543 centimeters, and can work backwards to solve for X, the number of rubber bands needed on that bungee cord. There is no failure and um, if, if, if it occurs then it's an opportunity to learn and that's how we view every failure in this math class. It, it's not that I failed, it's what do, what do I still need to learn? I'm still in the game of learning here. I'm still going to finish strong. And that is absolutely it. There, there isn't ever, you're a failure, you're, you're a stellar. We don't even talk like that in my classroom. Right now what I'm trying to do is keep them in the game of learning and to celebrate the small successes. Um, it may be much harder to be that A student that they were and we acknowledge every day that this is harder than it's ever been. So if you're really busting it and you're doing your best and you've got a B, let's celebrate that B. And it's been a learning curve for teachers, for students, for parents, for, for everybody. At one hand, we feel like everything has changed. The grading system has changed. The TEKS have changed. Our, our books have changed. Our textbooks have changed. I mean, like, nothing is the same as it was uh, in years past. But another viewpoint, nothing has changed. And that is that um, we're here for the students. We want students to be successful. I want students to believe that they can learn anything. Um, I want them to belong, and that's never going to change. My name is Amy Anderson. I teach 8th grade math and Algebra 1 at Cronover Middle School for Denton ISD.